Ah, the Mindflare Retro Workbench. A quiet, tranquil place with not very much room to work. What to do, what to do. Well, I realize that the full retro computer experience includes using your old CRT. But when you have a sick Commodore 64 that you need to splay open on your little workbench, the CRT is in the way. Now, for some reason, I've gotten used to working this way for a long time now, lifting the monitor on and off the workbench during a repair. But now, I think it's time I got rid of this and started using this. Enter the bin of bits and bobs. So I have a collection of all kinds of really old electronics bits and pieces that I've collected over the years. And I thought I'd challenge myself to see if I could use up all these old parts for this project without having to buy anything new. Now fortunately the LCD I want to use, which is mounted above my workbench, has an S-Video input. So I first thought to myself, well let's just make a Commodore 64 S-Video output cable. And then I thought, hmm, what if I can kill two birds with one stone? A lot of the times I get Commodore 64s that have their original AV cables, and I want to test those too. So now I want to make a little AV adapter box that will accept the original RCA plugs from the Commodore 64 AV cable, but will output video to S-Video and output audio to Minijack. The most common Commodore 64 AV cable outputted chrominance, luminance, and audio, and had an 8-pin DIN connector on the other end. If you Google C64 AV port or AV cable, you are sure to come across Ilke Schierstad's Commodore 64 in the modern day blog. My apologies if I butchered your name. In his blog post, C64 AV cable theory and practice, you'll find an excellent explanation of the C64 8 pin AV port, as well as a great guide on how to make your own C64 S video cable. And we do have to keep in mind that any type of S-Video mod, cable, or adapter is only going to work with Commodore 64 models that have an 8-pin AV port. Some very early Commodore 64 motherboard revisions, like PCB assembly number 326298, had only a 5-pin AV port that was outputting composite video only and did not have split luminance and chrominance signals, which is required for S-Video. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I want to put a little twist on this and make an S-Video adapter box. So I did find an old S-Video cable, which will come in handy, but even better, this previously enjoyed project box. And no word of a lie, inside the project box, a PCB mount RCA socket with three sockets that perfectly color match the three output plugs of the Commodore 64 AV cable. This project was meant to be. And now the only trick is to figure out how to put everything together. After some measuring and guessing, I decided I'm going to install the RCA sockets into the top lid portion of the project box, taking advantage of the existing hole that's already there. Obviously, I will have to drill two new holes on either side of the existing hole so that everything fits, but that shouldn't be a problem. And I use my handy automatic center punch tool to mark my drill points. That looks acceptable. And next, we're going to prep the S-Video cable, separating its wires from one end. There are four wires, luminance, chrominance, and each of those has its respective ground wire as well.
Okay, I've finished separating the wires from one end of the S video cable, but now I'm going to draw myself a little diagram because I want to map exactly which pin goes to which wire. You can never be too sure. And while I do this, let's have a little chat about the S video standard. The Commodore 64 doesn't actually output the quote unquote S video standard because it wasn't really a standard until the late 80s when JVC introduced its consumer Super VHS VCRs that outputted a cleaner separate video or S video via a four pin mini DIN that came to be known as the S video connector. Even though the Commodore 64 exports separate Luma and Chroma signals similar to S video, those signal levels are actually significantly higher. In particular, the chroma or color signal from the Commodore 64 is quite excessive and can wreak havoc on many monitors and TVs with S-Video inputs. And the solution is pretty simple, a resistor. A little bit of resistance on the chroma line reduces that signal enough to make it behave better as an S-Video signal. And from all the information available online, a 300 to 330 ohm resistor will do the trick. I'm soldering a 330 ohm resistor here to the chroma wire and then I will add a little bit of heat shrink tubing to protect it and then all the wires will be soldered on to their respective RCA sockets. Okay, the chroma and luma wires are now soldered to their RCA sockets. The inner socket contact is connected to the live signal and the outer socket contact is connected to ground. Also you can see that we do have our required resistor in place on the chroma signal line. And at this stage I think I will connect the sockets to the outer lid of the project box using some hot glue. The hot glue is cooled down and the socket is secure, so the next step is to connect an audio wire. This simple mono audio wire will connect to the center positive and outer ground or negative connection of the RCA jack, like so. The audio wire is now soldered to its socket and I've added a zip tie to act as a strain relief for the wires. I think I can close this up and start working on the other end of the audio connector. Now you may have noticed at the beginning of the video that the good old bin of bits and bobs did actually contain a package of 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. This works out perfectly because I want the Commodore 64 audio to pass through the adapter box and into a pair of desktop computer speakers. Even this rigid heat shrink tubing was in the bin of bits and bobs. In keeping with the challenge, I didn't have to buy one component for this little project. Assembly is now complete, and everything looks really good if I do say so. I've added some printed labels to the RCA inputs on the adapter box itself, and the S-Video and audio output connectors are ready to be attached to my monitor and speakers. I've got my Commodore 64 ready to go, and I'm going to plug its AV cables into the adapter box. Chroma, audio, and Luma. The S-Video output is now connected to the S-Video input on the back of my LCD and the audio is connected to my desktop computer speakers. Okay, we've come to the moment of truth. This monitor has a picture-in-picture -picture function, so the S-Video input is being shown on the right and I'll turn on the Commodore 64. Ta-da! Well, it w works. Sort of. We have some good news and bad news. Good news is... The adapter box seems to be outputting S-Video pretty well. Now there are some scan lines scrolling up the screen, but that's just the camera. The bad news is, looks like I have another sick Commodore 64 on the workbench.
Well, this turned out to be a successful little project. The ultimate goal was to clear some workbench space, and that was accomplished. I'm happy with the quality of the S video, and I even managed to stick to my little challenge using only old parts from an old junk bin. I didn't have to buy one component for this project. Now, I should mention I did test the audio off camera, and it worked fine. Except there is some noise on the line when the Commodore 64 audio is plugged into the adapter box. I'm not quite sure what's causing this. I do suspect it might have something to do with the fact that I am plugging in stereo speakers that have a three conductor, 3.5 millimeter stereo mini jack into the mono connector of the adapter box. So maybe there's some sort of cross channel interference and or some other grounding issue that I haven't figured out yet. If anyone watching could provide some insight as to why this might be happening, I would really appreciate your input in the comments. I'll leave it there regarding this little project. Again, overall, I'm pretty happy how everything turned out. I'll include some links below if you wanted to make your own C64S video cable or something similar to this adapter box. Also, other retro computer YouTubers like Ian Beta or Gricey's Workbench have also posted excellent videos on how to make your own Commodore 64S video cable, so you should check those out as well. Links are below. I hope you found this video to be interesting enough to leave a thumbs up. Always appreciate it. And I always enjoy hearing back from viewers in the comments, so please leave a comment. And seeing as it looks like I have another Commodore 64 to fix, stay tuned for that repair. As always, thank you very much for watching, thanks for your time, and see you soon.